words of power because we are kings and our words matter. Whatever he says is the truth. You can cling to it. You can hang on to it. You can take it. You can put it in your mouth. You can speak it. And I will show you that when you get to a place where you begin to believe that whatever you say will come to pass, then you'll have what you say. When peace like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea billows roll what is Turn with me to another passage, Mark's Gospel, chapter 5. The passage about the woman with the issue of blood. Chapter 5, and let me read to you from verse 25 onwards. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. She had a real serious problem for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Now, I guess even in those days, medical treatment was quite expensive, I guess. This woman lost everything she had. 12 years she's been going to the hospital, getting admitted, seeing the doctors, getting the medicines, getting the treatments, having the checkup, everything. They tried their best. All the doctors in the world tried their best. All that they could do, every kind of treatment was given. She grew worse. That's the thing that happened to her. She was not getting better. She was actually going in the reverse direction, grew worse. Now listen what happened. When she heard about Jesus, when she heard about Jesus, she began to hear about Jesus. Now she must have heard some good things because whatever she heard caused her to behave the way that she behaved after that. So it's important what you hear about Jesus. It's not enough that you just went to some kind of place, uh, you know, and uh, just worshipped, so to speak. It is important that you hear 
the right things about Jesus, that you're able to see Jesus. You're able to see him as he really is. It is important what you hear about Jesus because by faith cometh by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. So what you hear is very important. Jesus said, take heed what you hear. Some people say, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter what you hear. As long as you're inside that building, seated before the pulpit. So that as long as you can see the, see the stage and, uh, and, and, and just bow before it, you know. Everything is fine. What is preached is not important, they think. But Jesus said, take heed what you hear. That's why we don't have nothing there. Because I'm sure if I put something there, some of you will come and touch it and go afterwards. <laughs> I have no problem putting some things there, you know. Maybe it will make it look nicely, more churchy and all that, you know. Uh, that's fine with me, you know. Uh, but some of you, what you will do is, you will be worshipping that, you know. It's like, it's, it's, it's like uh, Father Bergman was saying one time, you know, one lady came, it seems, and uh, found him without the cassock, you know. And uh, she came, she said, I came to bow before you, but where is your cassock? He said, it seems, it's hanging over there. <laughs> you want to worship it? Go and worship it there. The man is not important. Whatever he was wearing has become so important now. He said, go there, bow before it. So that's why we don't have nothing. And some one lady actually asked me, why you don't have anything here? Just for you only, we don't keep anything, I said. <laughs> <laughs> because of you only. <laughs> because all your attention will be on that. That is why. We have a preacher here, we have a Bible here, we have PA system here, excellent stuff here so that you can hear the word of God here. What people must hear, we give it properly. We don't want to give anything else, you know. No distractions. All right. The thing is this, she hears about Jesus and what you hear is so important. Because what you hear brings faith. And look at what happened. In uh, uh, verse 27, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, I, if, I, if, I only, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Now it's telling us that she came and touched the garment because she has been saying, if I only touched his garments, I shall be made whole. She's been saying it for some time. If you read the Amplified Version, it actually says, you know, that she was continually saying that if she will touch the hem of her gar his garment, she will be healed. It was not saying one time, some time ago, you know, when she heard about him, no. It is not just a one-time utterance that came out of her mouth. It was something that kept coming out of her mouth, that if I only touch him, I will be healed. If I only touch him, I'll be, the moment I touch him, I'll be healed. This is what she's been saying. So when they came this way, she heard about it and came and touched him. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that the power had gone out of him, around the, uh, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her uh, who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. So she came to him and said, listen, I've been hearing about you. I got faith in my heart. I began to hear about all your miracles and all the things and that you've taught and all of that. And I began to say in my heart as a result of hearing as a result of the faith that came into my heart, I began to say that if I only ever met you and touched the hem of your garment, you don't even have to touch me. If I just simply touch the hem of your garment, I will be healed. This is what I believed. This is what I've known all this time. This is what I've said all this time. Therefore, I was the one that came and touched you, she says. 
And he said to her, listen to this, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Now, I want to say something here. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Now, a lot of people don't stop and think about these things. We need to really, what is Jesus saying? A lot of people say, Jesus healed her. Their simple conclusion after reading the story is that Jesus healed her. That's, the, that's what the story says, that this woman had a problem for 12 years, went to doctors, they couldn't heal her, came to Jesus, touched the hem of his garment, and she was healed, Jesus healed her. No, the last part was not right. Jesus himself says that her faith made her whole. Jesus never said, I healed her. Jesus himself says, her faith made her whole. What is he saying? What he's saying is this. It is what she heard, what she had confessed, what she had said when she said, if I touch, if I only touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. That is what brought her healing, he says. That's exactly what healed her. Your faith has made you whole. And I say to you today, this is so important. See, if you understand this thing, then a lot of foolishness will go out of Christians, you know. People don't understand. It's their faith that heals them. It's important. Your faith is, why do we think, why do you think we preach faith and teach faith so strongly and week after week for many weeks? Why do we do this? Because your faith is very important. You cannot receive anything from God without your faith. Your faith is absolutely necessary. It is by your faith you can be healed. It is by your faith that you can receive every blessing that has come to you through the cross of Calvary. It is by your faith. Your faith is absolutely important. Now, people somehow seem to never get it, you know, because they think some preacher will do it for them. And preachers also sometimes never make it plain and clear that they can't do it for them, that they're simply there to preach about what Jesus has done so that faith can come. See, the preachers have a role. We have a role. We're important in, in, in our own way. You know, one fellow was very concerned when I preached. He said, if you preach like this, who will come? I said, why are so many people coming then? The people are coming not because I will do something for them, because I am telling them a valuable information, something that brings faith. I'm preaching the word of God, preaching about the finished work of Christ, what Jesus has already done. I am not doing anything for them now. I am preaching what has been done and kept in store. The wonderful things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and mind has not comprehended, that has been prepared for them that love God. I'm preaching about that. So people come and hear that. Why? What will happen when they hear that? When they hear that faith will come, then what will happen? Then they will begin to say, I will be healed. I will succeed. I will prosper. I will turn my failure into success. I will come up in Jesus' name. I will not stay down. I will rise up and I will make it. Something will happen in them. They'll begin to, begin to express their faith. And when they begin to express their faith with their words, it's not very long before, it's not going to be very long before they realize what they're speaking because he will have whatever he says. That's faith's, uh, that's faith's uh, principle. Once you get faith in your heart and when you say and declare, you're establishing you're establishing what you'll have, what is yours, what is not yours. See? So, there is a big difference between the centurion and us. He came waiting for Jesus to utter a word. Speak one word, my servant will be healed. He didn't even have the guarantee whether Jesus would speak the word and do the favor and be good enough to heal this centurion by speaking the word. But he believed that if he did speak the word, he will be healed. But we come today not telling Jesus or anyone to speak a word. We come today with the word so that we can understand. I hope you understand that. We come today with the word. We look into the word. We expound upon the word. We hear the word. 
We hear about Jesus. We see Jesus here. We see our dominion here. We see our authority here. We see how we can rule over our storms of life here. We understand what we are and who we are and what we can do and what is possible for us. And then we begin to exercise our faith and our authority. We are not waiting for somebody to speak the word. We have understood something that we must speak the word. And if we speak one word, that is able to change everything for us. One word can do so much. You know, after that centurion said that, speak the word and my servant will be healed. Jesus said to him in verse 13, go your way. Matthew 8, 13. Jesus said to the centurion, go your way. And as you have believed, so let it be done for you. He didn't say go and pray earnestly. He didn't say go and fast for a few days. Something will happen. He didn't say go and cry and beg God. No, he said go your way. Problem solved. Go your way. As you have believed, so let it be done to you. He says, what you believe is what you're going to get. As you believed, it will be to you. Go your way, he says. See, if you told this to a lot of believers, they'll never go. You know what they're going to say? They're going to stand there and say, what is this? I came and told my problem. I thought he will say, I will come to your house and we'll have a fasting prayer. Or you come to my all night prayer. <laughs> or you SMS 10,000 people around the world. We'll all together cry to God and something will happen. You never said anything like that. But he says, go your way. What you believed you'll have, go your way. See, that's too simple. Eh? One man called me to preach in a fasting meeting where he was completing his 40-day fast. I didn't know that. He called me to speak and I went. And it happened to be that he was completing his 40-day fast. He told me after I got there, this is my uh, fasting coming to a close. They'll give me a juice and I'll drink it and then you preach. I said, is it all right if I preach? Ask and it shall be given unto you. Because they've changed it to fast and it shall be given unto you. <laughs> this is too simple. What is this ask and it shall be You know, we're trying so hard fasting, but this guy is saying asking will do. I say to you again, ask and it shall be given unto you. I see fasting for only one reason, and that is to understand these glorious truths. It is worth setting, setting aside one meal and sitting with this, to concentrate on this, setting aside time and burying your head into this and going into this to understand this. You know, because God is not keeping everything there, telling us to fast, then only I'll give, let's see how long you can fast, you know. No. He has already prepared it and kept it for us. And heaven and earth are waiting for us to open our mouth and speak. Because everything, all of creation recognizes you and I as the authority. All the angels are looking down to what is coming out of our mouth. But we don't realize that our mouth is so important. We think this is the most unimportant thing. I had one man say the other day, you shouldn't take everything I say very seriously, brother. No, you shouldn't take it all seriously. Because we say so many things. So I decided that I should believe none of the things he, this guy says, you know, useless. Whatever he says is nonsense, you know. If he said the preaching was good, I can't believe him. He just, he's no good. He's simply saying, 
But God is not like that. Whatever he says is the truth. You can cling to it. You can hang on to it. You can take it. You can put it in your mouth. You can speak it. And I will show you that when you get to a place where you begin to believe that whatever you say will come to pass, then you'll have what you say. Whatever you say will come to pass. If you speak like that, then you will have whatever you say. A lot of people have lost faith in their own words. They have lost faith in the fact that God has made them in this way. And they have lost sight of these things. And they have lost track, you know, completely. And we need to bring this back into our lives. That our words are very important. The power is here in our mouth. The word must be in our mouth, not just here. We must learn it, meditate on it, do it so that it will be in our mouth, so that in the situations and circumstances of our life, we will stand and speak the word and not anything else. You know, that's how you rule. How do you rule, about, rule over your financial situation of life? Now, in India, we talk about the end of the month, you know. <laughs> we've, come, we've come to the last stages, brother. Only 100 rupees in the bank account, you know. <laughs> All gone. End of the month. So we believed that end of the month must be like this. So we naturally respond for every, every, in every situation like that. No, don't come in the end of the month. That's a bad time. Because I won't have the money. I can tell you now, I won't have the money. And sure enough, you know. Because we've been saying that 35 years, you know. I can tell you, end of the month is not a good time. Because we never have money. Why can't you open your mouth and say, end of the month or beginning of the month, it's all the same. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Come any time because I trust in God and I will have it and I will give it in Jesus' name. <laughs> Why can't we change our, the way we talk, you know? No use talking at the end of the month like that, you know. You got to begin at the beginning of the month itself. <laughs> Some people begin trouble at the beginning of the month. First they receive the salary, they bring it and say, what salary brother, this is not even enough for 15 days. You watch, in 15 days it will be nothing. And sure enough in 10 days it goes to nothing. Rest of the 20 days you're borrowing here, there, everywhere, you know. Waiting for the next first of the month. And... Uh, this kind of preaching, we think, is, doesn't mean anything, you know. But this preaching says, no, no, when you, buy, when you get that small salary, you begin to say, this is God's provision. This will last me till the end of the month and even to the next month. <laughs> even to the next month. When God blesses you, the Bible says, the reapers will still be reaping when the sowers show up to sow for the next harvest. Why they're still reaping? The harvest is so great. Hello. That means the next salary is coming and you don't even need it because you've got already for next month. <laughs> that's the ble that's blessing, you see. But, you know, but this is how you rule. How do you rule? over your situation. How is ruling done? How do you dominate? How do you subdue everything? How do you subdue your problems? It is by the words of your mouth. Speak a word and my servant will be healed. That centurion has understood. This is how ruling is done. This man is a ruler. I can see in him that he is dominating everything. Speak a word. My servant will be healed. Now we say, we've got the word. Thank you, Lord. We will speak it in our situation. In our circumstances, we will make it right in Jesus' name by speaking the word. In spirit, soul, and body, in every area of your li our life, we'll speak the word and make it right. Over sin, he is conquered, hallelujah, he is conquered over death, victorious, hallelujah, victorious over sickness, he is triumph, hallelujah, he is triumph, Jesus reigns over all, over sin, over sin, he is 
Over sin, over death, over sickness, over curse, over poverty, over every enemy that stands against us. He has conquered and therefore we have conquered. All praise and honor and glory be to Jesus in this place.